This story from Scorpion Soup is called Cat Mouse. There was once an island on which the cats reigned supreme. They lived like royalty, gorging themselves on the abundant mouse populace, forcing the mice to work for them as slaves. In the factories and in the mines, the mice laboured from before dawn till well after dusk. All the while, their cat masters became increasingly cruel and lazier and lazier as the mice served them. From time to time, a lone mouse would escape his shackles, jump up and taunt the cats. But such breakouts always ended in the same way. The offending mouse would be caught, tortured and slowly devoured while still alive. Rather than becoming disheartened at their fate, the mice became increasingly tolerant. As the months and years dragged on, the mice slaves found that they could endure worse and worse conditions, and as they did so, their feline masters became um, progressively neglectful. Eventually the day came when all the cats fell asleep on a long, hot summer afternoon. Seizing the moment, the mice in the slave camp managed to unfasten their chains and broke free. Having tied up the cat guards, they stormed the pleasure domes in which their feline masters reclined. Strengthened by years of servitude, the mice quickly gained the upper hand, and the cats had no choice but to become the slaves of the mice. Begrudgingly they did so, but so hardened by their own experience as slaves, the mice were themselves ruthless masters, regarding the cats as vermin, they thought nothing of executing them, summer, summarily, summarily, for even the most trifling misdemeanour. The cat numbers fell dramatically. Indeed, such was the mouse rage that the cats were almost entirely wiped out, their numbers reduced to a handful. The survivors themselves plucked up courage and broke free. Making their way by night down to the beach, the last cats built a raft with a flimsy mast and sail, and they took to the ocean waves. Within a day or two, all but one was dead. A scrawny tabby cat. He survived because his treatment as a slave to the mice had been especially harsh. And as a result, he had learned to harness reserves of strength that other cats didn't know they possessed. After a few days and nights on the waves, this last bedraggled cat reached another island, an island ruled over by ghouls. Fearsome in looks and demeanour, the ghouls had a legend that one day a saviour unlike them would come from the distant horizon and would rule over them. Every ghoul child was raised with the legend and could quote it by heart. Each morning and night, all the ghouls clustered around on the sands to peer out to where the water met the sky. Centuries had passed, and no saviour ever came, but still they went, waited, and they never gave up hope. Searching the horizon for their saviour became important in itself, a kind of divine act by which the ghouls lived. Gathering together twice a day kept the community and the society strong, and was a way by which traditions and folklore were passed from one ghoul generation to the next. On the evening of the cat's arrival at the island, the ghouls were clustered around at the beach, singing a song venerating their saviour, the saviour who had never come. Some of them had forgotten exactly why they met twice daily, yet in many ways it didn't really seem to matter why they were there so much as the fact that they were. Look there, cried one of the ghoul children suddenly, pointing to the distance. Keep singing and stop making a noise, snapped one of the ghoul elders. Father, look, exclaimed another of the children. A surge of anticipation swept through the group as all the ghouls, young and old, set eyes on the raft. The cat was pulled to safety and was taken to the, la to the house that had been built for the saviour were he ever to come. Fed delicious morsels of fish, he was fanned with palm fronds and told over and old over 
how very special he was. Unable to believe his luck, the cat enjoyed indulgence for a long while. He learned to speak the ghoul language and became well versed in the ghoulish lore and traditions of which he himself was part. But now that their saviour had arrived, the ghoul society began to collapse. With no reason to cluster down at the beach, the ghoul community became fragmented. The legends and the songs were forgotten. And then, eventually, the ghouls began to question why they had to support such a lazy tabby cat, even though he was supposed to be their saviour. Fortunately, one of the ghouls was more enlightened than the others, and he realised what was happening. Little did he know that it was his ancestor who devised the idea of the ghoul saviour arriving as a device to keep the community in harmony. After much consideration, he poisoned the cat as he slept. Beside his now bloated feline body, he left a document. When they found the remains of their saviour, the ghouls were disconsolate. They jumped up and down and they beat themselves with sticks. What are we to do now that our saviour has left us? They all cried as one. The enlightened ghoul jabbed a hand towards the document. The saviour may have gone to new hunting grounds, he said, but he's left us this. It will become the core of a new faith, he said, and will be repeated day and night by us all down at the beach. The ghouls hurried down to the sands. We want to hear it. We want to worship our saviour, the cat, they all cried when they were all clustered together before the setting sun. The enlightened ghoul read the story to the others as they listened.